Hi, Joffrey, and welcome. I'm Rafael de Paula, or Rafa to my friends. I'm named for the famous bullfighter from Spain, probably because I'm also so handsome and brave. I'm a Spanish water dog and second generation American. My grandmother is from a little town in the mountains of southern Spain called Ubrique. My parents are from Egypt and the United States. They taught me to appreciate different places and culture. That may be why I became a geographer. I now teach geography at Monmouth University in the United States. Go Hawks! I went to Berkeley. I was originally studying philosophy, but I graduated with a degree in archaeology. I love to dig. So, we both study the humanities. I really like studying humans. It's interesting how I have to walk them around on a leash. <laughs> As you know, on this show, we roam the world and compare our American culture to another on the planet. Everyone has a culture and a world perspective, and it's fun to see things in a different way. On this adventure, we visit two coastal communities and see how each culture or group of people in a place perceive the coast. Most people live near the coast, whether on a large continent or an island. I suppose we're drawn to the water. Well, I'm a water dog, so I'm drawn to water. Let's pause a moment and play a game I like to call Stump the Geographer. The way this works is, I'll ask you a series of questions about the country we're going to explore. And we can see how well you know your facts about culture and place, Mr. Jeffrey the Geographer. You willing to bite? I won't beg. I guess I can give it a try. Spin the globe and let's roam. Welcome to Stump the Geographer. Are you ready, Jeffrey, to test your knowledge of people and place? Bring it on. Remember, all the questions I ask will reveal the one specific country we are going to explore on this visit. First question. What country is made up of 700 islands? That's seven, zero, zero. Hmm, 700 islands. I I do believe that answer is Indonesia. <laughs> that was a picture of my sister Lola, shocked at your answer. No, Indonesia has 17,508 islands. Indonesia is located in Southeast Asia, between which two oceans for a bone on us point? That's the Indian and Pacific. Here comes your bone. Here comes your bone. Nice catch. Wow, I had no idea Indonesia was made up of so many islands. Question number two. This country is one of only two in the world that officially begins with the word the. Yes, Dr. Jeff. This one seems easier than it probably is. Is it the Philippines? <laughs> That is incorrect. The other country which begins with the is the Gambia, which is located in Africa. Okay, so moving on to question three. This is a bit easier. This country is only 50 miles off the coast of Florida, so it is our neighbor. I think I know this. Is it Cuba? <laughs> LOL, A. That never gets old. So close, but that is incorrect. Cuba is 103 miles off the Florida coast, but also a neighbor of ours. I think I know where we're going. Okay, next question. This country was home to many a pirate and his treasure, including the infamous Blackbeard. Man, that's a great name for a dog, Blackbeard. Rafa, we're roaming to the Bahamas. That is correct. <laughs> well done. So, for a B 
bone on us point, what was Blackbeard's real name? Blackbeard's name was Edward Teach. He was English, but he didn't teach English. He was a pirate. Well done, Jeffrey. Well done, and a great catch. You really unleashed your inhibitions on that one. Thanks for being a good boy, Jeffrey. <laughs> now that we played our little game, we found out that we're traveling to the Bahamas. People who live there are called Bahamians. And the flag is a beautiful yellow and aqua blue. Yellow for the beaches and blue for the shallow water. While the black represents the power of the people. Yes, Rafa, many people have traveled to this group of islands which rests in the Atlantic Ocean. It was a favorite place for pirates for decades and remains a favorite place for tourism due to its indigo colored water, welcoming beaches and warm temperatures year round. The Bahamas is an archipelago or group of islands scattered in a body of water. They are located just off of the coast of Florida. If we take the Bahamas and place it on a map of the US for a size comparison, we can see that it is a bit smaller than Florida. So quite a bit smaller than the US. There are so many interesting facts about the Bahamas. So now it's time for K-9 Fun Facts about the Bahamas. Number one, islands are made of limestone and feature an underwater cave system. Number two, Columbus and the Spanish fleet landed here October 12th, 1492. Number three, there is an island of iguanas and an island of swimming pigs. Number four, the flamingo is the national animal. The ratio of people to flamingos is one to 61. Number five, the most popular food is the conch, which is a snail-like creature that lives in a shell instead of a crate. Number six, it has the second deepest blue hole in the world called Dean's Blue Hole. A blue hole is an underwater cavern or sinkhole. Number seven, it has one of the world's largest aquariums and features a slide in it. Number eight, the Bahamian dollar is equal to the US and in the Bahamas, you can use the US dollar, but don't try to use Bahamian money in the US. People will look at you like you're a crazy canine using money from another country. Number nine, some dogs on the islands are called pot cake dogs and have a relationship to humans quite different than in the US. And number 10, huh, I know it's supposed to be canine facts, but one more piece can't hurt. Number 10, the local music called rake and scrape features the goombay drum, accordion or concertina, and a handsaw. That's right, a handsaw. Wow, I've learned a lot of fun facts today. But Rafa, culture and place aren't just a bunch of fun facts. Take the Bahamas, for example. They have a rich history. As far as we know, they were first inhabited by the Arawak people, who were friendly and welcoming. Rafa, can you say hello in Arawakan? Hello in Arawakan. No, no, no. It's actually Tau. There are many words in our language that come from the Arawakans. Take for instance, tobacco, canoe, hurricane, and hammock. While the Arawakans lived in the Bahamas, Christopher Columbus sailed there in 1492. Unfortunately, due to disease and enslavement, the indigenous people were lost. The next settlers were British. Although they were constantly battling with the Spanish, French, and of course, pirates. Due to its location in the Atlantic and natural beauty, it seems everyone wanted to be there. English and loyalists from the US settled and brought a legacy of slave trade to the cotton plantations. And this resulted in the culturally rich society that exists today. Slavery was abolished in 1834. Although a British colony for 325 years, the country gained independence in 1973 and is now the Bahamas. Wow, 
What a rich history. I can see why you have a FUD. A what? A FUD. You know, a PhD. Yes, it's actually called a PhD or Doctorate of Philosophy. See, you are very smart. I'm actually an SWD. Hmm? A Spanish water dog. Rafa, everywhere in the world, people live together and they develop a similar culture. They may share similar foods, religions, habits, daily rituals. It may be similar to ours or it may be distinct. Many places on the planet are filled with multicultures. Let's take a look at island life and culture in the Bahamas and see how it may be the same or different to our own American culture. Our crew went to Eleuthera, one of the beautiful islands in the Bahamas, to speak with local Bahamians at the Cape Eleuthera Institute. I've got my doggy bags all packed. Hey, Rafa, welcome to the Bahamas. Being a Bahamian is about the sea, living on an island, living as part of a small community. The Bahamas is made up of lots and lots of small communities on different islands. There are over 700 small islands and keys in the Bahamas, and each of those has its own kind of culture and is different. Everybody swims and dives from when they're, you know, tiny kids. Yes, I love swimming. I love water. It just it gives you a peace of mind. The color of the water is aquamarine. We have much more like higher reefs and shoals. Some of the species of fish, like the pirate fish, eat off the reefs and take all most of the fungus. So that's what would really make the water totally different from in the Bahamas and New Jersey. So I guess the big thing about growing up on an island is that everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows you, they know who you are, they know who your parents are. It feels quite safe um, because you're in a fixed area. You, you know, you can't just disappear off an island. Um, and equally, there's a lot of freedom. That was the main thing for me, you know. I grew up getting to go out in boats from, you know, when I was 12, I was driving boats. Um, I rode my bike to school every day from when I was seven. Um, so there's a lot of really good things about um, being part of an island, knowing your whole community. Well, the locals go fishing on the local time. Go in like one of those tangy boats like you guys can see here, with the engine on the back of it, just go out and catch some fish. The slogan says, stress less and go fish. One thing I think the Bahamians are very good at is taking time to enjoy the environment around us. So, you know, we'll, be out in the boat um, on a day or we'll just jump out and get some fish and have a fish fry or get some conch which is a big marine snail um, that lives here in the Bahamas and have a conch salad that's a popular dish here and just enjoy that with a drink and just being a little bit more relaxed and, and kind of enjoying life. A Bahamian they experience a whole lot of dishes or uh, you have like cracked lobster you have like cracked conch you have pan fried fish with the different seasoning, you know, and much more tastier. So that's what is so unique about the Bahamas and being a Bahamian. Wow, that was super interesting. I never thought about how different the ocean must seem when it is all around you every day. There are many cultures on the planet which build their lives, food, fun, employment, everything around the ocean, it is always in front of them. When you live in a large country like the US or China or Russia, you have many other resources, plant life, minerals, rivers and lakes that the sea becomes in some cases secondary or a backdrop. And it makes sense that if the oceans are rising from climate change or fish supplies are disappearing, you are going to be much more concerned if you live on an island than if you live in the mountains, say, in Colorado. 
Now let's head to Sandy Hook, New Jersey to see how Americans view coastal living. live on an island, most of your culture and life revolve around uh, the sea, much more than in the United States. This is a big continent and many people really look at the coast or coastal resources as that two week vacation every year. And they're busy with their life and they're busy with other things. And so it's not something that's always on their mind and it's not something that they're fully immersed in. And if you don't grow up surfing or fishing or doing things like that, it, it's not something that you really even really thinking about what resources come from the sea and, and what things revolve around it. If you think about the United States, like I know many people that don't even eat seafood. So if you don't eat seafood, you have no thought process that says, gee, I wonder if there's a conservation issue associated with that. I w wonder where it even comes from. Another great example is sea level rise. So those of us that live in this narrow strip along the coast, know that we should be thinking about sea level rise and the impacts of sea level rise. If I live away from the coast, sea level rise is this abstract thing because sea level rise isn't going to get me. And so I hear about it, I read about it, it's on the news, but it's not a direct impact. So the geography in the Caribbean, like the Bahamas, is very different because they're low-lying islands, whereas we have mountains, we have plains, we have areas that are so far removed from the ocean, they're not going to be impacted by those kinds of things. Although we're surrounded by the sea, the Great Lakes, the Atlantic, the Gulf and the Pacific, there's a lot of space in between those coastal cultures, those coastal communities uh, where, where you don't see that in, in the islands where everybody is on a small piece of property surrounded by the sea. Thank you, Jeffrey, for taking time to roam with me. Check in again for our next adventure as we gnaw at an issue and see how it affects people in the U.S. and another country on Rafa Roams the World, when not at home. Here's hoping you have a treat-filled time until we meet again. I can't wait, Rafa.